And in our final segment, we're going to page 58. That's page 58. We're going to take a little song called Because He Lived. We're going to take the seven chords that we just learned, and we're going to look at them in this song. We're going to see what chords in this chord chart are diatonic, meaning they fit in the key naturally, and which ones are non-diatonic, and see which ones are borrowed chords from another key. So first, the song goes like this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. chords one at a time and we're going to see what fits and what doesn't. First we have a plain old F chord. Obviously that fits in the key of F. Play that, B, that F chord with me. Next plain old B flat. Does B flat fit in the key? Yeah. Next we have F over C. That's an F chord with C on the bottom. Take this F chord and the quickest way is to twist that C one octave lower. Go. Good. Does that fit in the key? Yep. Next we have D minor 7. We've got to get a D minor chord and then go octave minus a whole step. Does that fit in our list of diatonic 7 chords over there? Good. Next we have G minor 7. Take a G minor. We've got a B flat in the middle. Remember that B flat. All the B's are automatically flats. G minus a whole step makes that G minor 7. Does that fit in the key? Yep, good. Next we have something called C7 sus and C7. I want you to look at the C7 first and then we'll learn how to sus it. Start with a C. This is dominant 7 so it's a mutt so we need to do how far down is the 7 in the top? Half step or a whole step? No, dominant seven is an octave minus a whole step. It's a major triad with a minor seven. That's why it's called a mutt, okay? Now, if we want to make this into a C7 sus, the only note that gets affected is this middle note E. So the E has to go up a half step. So the notes in a C7 sus chord are C, F, G, and B flat. Okay, now make it a regular C7 again. Good. Okay, go to measure 10. We have a plain old F. That's obviously diatonic, but it's gonna start getting crazy. The next chord is F dominant seven. What's the top note of an F dominant seven? That's right. You gotta go octave minus a whole step to make it dominant. Does this chord naturally fit into the key of F? No. That top E flat note is borrowed. So I want you to circle this chord and say borrowed over it. Okay, good. The next chord is a B flat. We know that's diatonic. But the next one's a little bit crazy. B flat minor over D flat. This is measure 13. First, we gotta get a B flat minor, and the quickest way to do that is? Lower third and half step. That's right. So take the middle note B, down a half step. There's your B flat chord. It has a B flat, D flat, and F. And now it's saying to put D flat on the bottom. So we need to twist this guy around until D flat's on the bottom. So what do we need to do? Take the B flat up and octave. So there's B minor over D flat. D flat, F, B flat. 
Is that chord diatonic? No. It's a borrowed chord, so circle that one and put borrowed. Okay, next chord's F over C. We already saw that one fits, hit F over C. Next one's crazy, D7. Let's build a D7. What kind of triad does it need? Dominant seven. Major or minor triad. <laughs> Dominant seventh chords are a major triad with a minor seven. So start with a D major chord, and then we're gonna go octave minus a whole step. That's a D dominant seven. Does that chord naturally fit in the key of F? No, this F sharp messes it up. So circle that D7 and put borrow. Okay. Then go to G minor seven. We already know that one. That one's good. It's diatonic. Next go to C7. That one's good. And down to plain old F. Okay, so the rest of them are diatonic, right? So we have three non-diatonic chords in this song. Let's sing and just play with our left hand all the chords we just played in time. One, two, three, four, one. Take a minute or so to work on those left hand chords yourself. <laughs> <laughs> 